Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week I'm going to show you a pretty cool trick to use half as much epoxy in your table project where you can take a thin slab like this and essentially double the thickness to one like this. The main reason I wanted to try this project out here is because I had some really cool offcuts from some of the prettiest English walnut I've ever seen, and you can see it in this table here, and I wanted to make use of every last bit of it, but I didn't have a whole bunch of it left. I just had this one kind of long chunk. Um, and it was kind of thick, but it wasn't very wide. So I wanted to figure a way how to incorporate this and make an entire desk out of it using a one pretty small piece like this. For those of you that are new to my videos, I'm going to take you through the entire process of how to make one of these epoxy resin tables. If you've already watched my videos or if you just want to see this edge trick, you can go ahead and skip straight ahead to the 6 minute and 50 second mark and that'll get you right to that edge trick. But for the rest of you, I will show you everything I know and everything I can teach you about making one of these tables from start to finish. You can see so far all I've really done is gotten each side flat and cut it slightly oversized. It's going to end about 60 by 30. And so now I'm taking it over to resaw. And resawing is just basically sawing in half. And you do need a bandsaw to do this properly. Mine is capable of 13 inches, which is pretty good for a small shop bandsaw. If you don't have one, you really got to go kind of beg or borrow to use one if you do want to cut anything over, you know, just three or four inches, which is about what a table saw is capable of. I do have plenty opinions on which tools are best, and I try to include links to everything in the video description. So I'll have things like the blade I'm using here, that whatever that green thing is, which is actually a Bow Products Feather Pro. It's a pretty neat little tool to help with resawing. But you can see there, a cool thing about the book match is it makes just this almost mirror image of itself in the end. And it's just a really cool effect that you can use anything from drawer fronts to entire tables like this. I'm using my jointer here to get a nice perfectly flat edge before the glue up. If you don't have a jointer, you can actually make some jigs with your table saw or even a circular saw to get a really nice glue joint. So don't think that you have to have a jointer for this part. And here I'm just marking some kind of arbitrary points for my dominoes. And again, dominoes are super nice, but you could actually use dowels for this, which are much, much cheaper. The dominoes are definitely better, but dowels would work almost as well. The Domino is a luxury tool. Um, I think this one costs about $1,000 now, which is a huge investment. If you do any amount of joinery, it is definitely worth it. If you don't do a ton of joinery, then you can get by with just doing some dowel jigs from time to time. But what I'm doing here is just a quick test fit to make sure that I went deep enough with my dominoes that it's not going to stop when I get right in the middle of my glue up, because I've done that before and that can be very time consuming to make right. See there, we got a perfect fit, so it is going to be ready for glue. They fit so well, it can be really hard to take apart sometimes, though. For glue, I'm using the Tight Bond 3, which is a little bit more expensive than the normal glue, but it dries just super hard, and it's actually and it's waterproof, too, which I sh hope this table doesn't get exposed to any water, but it is kind of my go-to wood glue if you're looking for a good wood glue. The rest of this glue up is pretty standard. We're just brushing it on the other side. We're going to fill the other domino holes with some glue, snug it up, and I am going to use parallel clamps. If you're not familiar with parallel clamps, they just uh, clamp at much less of an angle. They're not perfectly parallel, but they do prevent this uh, glue up from kind of gluing an angle. So they're my go-to. You don't have to use them, though a pipe clamp would work almost as well. And I did take this table up to my resin table workshop a couple times a year. About four times a year actually now, I host a workshop at Gobi Walnut in Portland and people come from all over the country and actually we had our first uh, Canadian at the last one and we have somebody from India actually coming to the next workshop. So if you're interested in learning how to do this hands-on, how to actually uh, work with the table yourself, we build a table in real time. We start with half of a project, do the epoxy pour, and then we finish a previously started project through the second half of the class. So it's a pretty fun time. A lot of cool people, good chance for networking. I'll include a link in the video description if you want some more info on it, but it's definitely a pretty fun time if you want some more experience on how to make these resin tables yourself. This is a good time to mention that you do need to plan a little bit ahead if you do want to try this epoxy table trick to double your thickness, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting a thin strip off the edge, flipping it over, gluing it on the underside, which is going to cut any transparency you have in your epoxy in half. And so if you're going to do like a transparent blue, this probably wouldn't work very well. I'm using a jet black resin, so it's going to work perfectly well for me. So you do need to choose a good solid color that isn't going to have any transparency to do this trick the way that I'm doing it anyway. And since I normally work out of my house and I host these workshops up at Gobi Walnut, what I do is I leave it there for the three days for it to cure because I don't want to have it sloshing around in the back of my truck. So once it is cured, I get it back to my home shop and then I can continue on with the process. 
I'm going through here and I'm using these dental syringes, which are a pretty nice little tool for filling small cracks like this. And I'm using a faster drying epoxy. I'm not using that three day uh, slow cure epoxy that I used for the entire table. This one will dry overnight, so I don't have to wait another three days to a week just to you know fill some small cracks. Here's a good trick for seeing if it's hard enough. I use a plastic knife and it shouldn't dent it. It can scratch it a little bit, but it shouldn't dent it. Now that I'm ready to disassemble the mold, you'll see that what actually sticks to the mold is not the epoxy, it's the caulk that I used around the base of the melamine there. And so that's why I'm having to actually pop this off of. I did use a mold release. I'm not sure if you caught that earlier, but you always want to use a mold release when you're uh, doing these epoxy pours. These little wood wedges are freeing it from the little bit of caulk that had stuck around the edge. Once it's free, you can pop it up. You can see there, nice, super black epoxy. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, first off, welcome. I really appreciate you watching it. If you like what you see, I would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button up in the corner. It really helps my channel out, lets me make more content, and it doesn't even cost anything. And for those of you that have watched my videos before, you probably noticed that I did go to my regular industrial shop where they let me borrow their planer for about 30 minutes. So that's how I got it nice and smoothed out flat, moving on to the sanding process, which if you would like more information on the sanding process, I actually have a blog that I've done a couple different posts on the sanding and finishing aspect of how to get a perfect finish even in a dusty shop. So I'll include links to that in the video description below too, if you want kind of a in-depth deep dive how to finish a table in your shop, even the epoxy tables, which can be some of the hardest tables to finish in a dusty shop. Anyway, after I spend oh better part of a few hours filling these tiny little imperfections with that CA glue and sanding and filling the imperfections and sanding, I get it all the way up to the 320 grit and now I'm actually ready to start that edge trick that we talked about at the very beginning. I ended up marking my lines at an inch and a half, and so minus the blade thickness, it'll be just under an inch and a half, probably about one, an inch and three eighths. So I'm just basically cutting a strip off here. This actually took a couple passes, but I thought I'd save you the time of having to watch. Cutting another strip off the other side. Make sure you do left side, then right side, not the 90 degree sides first, because that will screw up the length of your pieces. So cut the two side pieces. Now you can cut the two end pieces. And what you're left there is with four pretty thin strips. Again, I'm going to my fast drying epoxy. This is a West System epoxy. A little bit of black dye in it to match the black dye that I used in uh, the regular table. And when you're clamping epoxy, don't over clamp. You can actually squeeze out too much epoxy and compromise the bond. So just kind of nice and snug. You want to actually leave some of that epoxy in there. The part you do want to take some time on is these end pieces. You want to cut them and you want them to be really just as tight as absolutely possible. You want to just have them barely snug in there and that's going to give you the tightest fit. And I did use wood glue on the wood portions, epoxy on the epoxy portions. You didn't want to get that black on the wood and I'll show you how I screwed something up here at the end that I got all the way to the finish point and had to completely redo it. But I'll show you that at the end. And just to make it look a little more interesting, I decided to add a 30 degree uh, bevel. I was going to say bevel, but it's actually a chamfer. Everybody likes to correct me if I say the wrong thing, but I'm adding a 30 degree chamfer to the edge of this table just to make it kind of a little bit more modern looking. And there you go. You have a 30 degree chamfer that uh, ended up looking pretty nice. And to smooth these edges out, it just took a little bit of sanding. I used a firm pad, got the 100 grit here, and just taken out those saw marks. And you might wonder why I didn't use a router and I couldn't get a router bit big enough to cut that tall of a chamfer, so I had to use my track saw there. You can see we have it sanded up to the 320. It looks pretty good at this point, and it will be ready for finish. Because the finish process can be so in-depth, I'm going to skip it in this particular video, but I will include a link in the video description below on a full deep dive on how to get a perfect finish in your own dusty shop. I'll talk more about this plywood piece in just a second, but there was something that... I messed up that I just couldn't ignore anymore. I had it all completely finished and there was this black epoxy seam that I just couldn't ignore. I thought it was gonna go away. I thought I could hide it and I can't. So now I have to do something. The table's completely finished and I have to do something to cover that up. And it's not the most elegant solution uh, to put the bow tie there. I generally like to have a bow tie where it would be more traditionally necessary, like in a crack, um, but it's all I could think of to cover that particular uh, blemish up and what that was was just a little bit of black resin that was left after planing it and when I flipped the edge over it basically doubled the thickness of it and uh, 
made it really, really visible. So I had to get a little bit creative with my trim router there on how to route that out, getting the chisels out. And I probably sound pretty repetitive, but I actually have a really detailed video on these bow ties and another video on the inlay process if you want. I'll include a link to that in the video description as well too. But this was the solution I came up with to cover up my screw up. And some of you probably noticed that it looked like the table was actually finished when I started this process and you are absolutely correct. So had to sand it all the way down and then completely refinish the whole table to get everything to match just perfectly again. But we're here we are back to the support. And this is just because the table was pretty thin in the end that I wanted to have more support. And I added threaded inserts and these furniture bolts that are gonna hold everything together. I did account for wood movement so there is a little bit of breathing room in there. And I added a French cleat so it could either be wall mounted or I uh, also added legs to it so it could be a desk or wall mounted um, because this is actually going to be on display up at Gobi Walnut and didn't want people setting stuff on it so I decided to put it up on the wall over there. If you are going to attach anything, it doesn't have to be just to a plywood base like this, but a uh, wood base, don't use leg bolts. Leg bolts are for decks. Don't use them in nice furniture. Use these threaded inserts. You can see here I'm just marking my holes with a little brad point bit so that way everything lines up exactly per, uh, exactly right. Doing the same thing on the other side and that way I know everything's going to fit. And make sure you use the right size bit with these threaded inserts. That's the biggest mistake people make is using a bit that is too small and then it causes chip out when you go to thread it in. So make sure you use the appropriate size bit for your threaded inserts. I'm adding a little bit of, just again, some of that tight Bond 3 wood glue. It's not made for metal and wood, but it is going to give a little bit of lubrication and a little bit more security to make sure they stay in place. I was really excited about the legs I found for this. I didn't know what I wanted, but they were exactly what I wanted in the end. They are by Flowy Line Designs by Alex Jew, and they're kind of a minimalist style, and he has some of the coolest, most original designs. I see endless amounts of legs every day, and he still surprises me with the designs he comes up with. So in a world where everything is so repeatable, he actually has some truly original designs. So here are the finished shots of the bow tie uh, mistake that I made but the rest of the table. And overall, uh, I would love to hear what you guys think of these legs because I think they're awesome on this particular table. I think they go well with that bevel that you really can't see any of the flaws from that flipping the edge. I think the legs complement it. I think the black works well with the black. Don't want to just take my opinion though. I'd love to hear what you have to think on the topic as well though. So please, please let me know in the comments. And if you liked what you saw, please subscribe for more videos just like this one. Thanks again.